What the? Well, that was weird. Anyways, welcome back to Under SF, Keep It Weird. I'm Sasha, and today we dive into the music scene in San Francisco. Whether that was whatever Nick just did or a huge festival, y'all know San Francisco can get very weird. On today's show, we'll have Professor Horitz the, from the music department come talk to us about the world of video game music. Then we'll have P. Kitty and SF State alumni come talk to us about the city's rave scene and what events are coming up. Nick will give us his weekly update, and then we have a special performance for you guys by a San Francisco State student's math rock band, Bird Caravan. But before we get to all that, I went around campus asking you guys about the music scene in SF. Let's check it out. Hello guys and welcome back to Under SF, Keep It Weird. My name is Sasha. Today I'm at Malcolm X Plaza interviewing a handful of students on music around the city. Let's see if things get weird. What are your favorite artists? Uh, I would say like Cali Uchi, The Killers, Lady Gaga, The Stallion, um, Princess Nokia, um, and then like some of NWA and Tupac and etc. How about you? Um, I like Kanye West, Kid Cudi, Travis Scott. Um, I like Rihanna, Chris Brown. Yeah. Have you guys been to any music festivals recently or concerts? So I haven't been to a music festival recently, but um, I went to an Ashanti concert and ooh, she was thick. Uh, and it was great. It was a great concert. <laughs> festivals or concerts recently? Yeah, I went to Cali Uchis earlier this month and then I went to Hardly Strictly. How was Hardly Strictly? What was the vibe like, or do you go for the music? I go for the music just because it's good vibes. Like, everyone's just like chilling, everyone like, there's like kids there too, like it doesn't matter. It's like everyone's accepted. You just drink with your friends and like good live music. What do you guys consider weird music? Uh, probably metal, because it's just like screaming and stuff, so like, I don't really mess with that. It sounds kind of crazy. How about you? Uh, I don't really listen to country, so I think country's kind of whack metal or indie music i will listen to it but some, it's not super normal so what is the next music event or concert that you're going to um i'm gonna see megan the stallion pretty soon i think it's next month um with my sister so i'm pretty excited about that and i'm hoping to save up money to go to coachella i feel you it's expensive well thank you so much Emily. thank you for your time Thank you guys for sharing your funky music genres with me. That's all we got time for today. Back to Isabel in the studio. Won't live a life on my knee. The voters are coming. I am here with Steve Horowitz, who has composed and produced scores for movies such as Super Size Me, worked for Nickelodeon, has 23 albums under his belt, and so much more. Hi, Steve. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. So tell me a little bit about yourself. How did you find your interest in audio? Well, it started from when I was very young. I started playing guitar when I was six years old. Okay. Um, and it just went from there. Okay, and I know I talked about you working with Nickelodeon. Yeah. Can you tell us your experience? Anything weird that's happened there? This is Keep It Weird, so tell us everything that's weird. Everything that happens at Nickelodeon is weird. No, I, I work with Nickelodeon <laughs> Digital, which is the games and, and uh, um, music production side of things. Um, so 
everything, I'll tell you, one of the first things that happened to me when I worked at Nickelodeon is I had come from record production and different aspects of, of music, mm -hmm. and I had come from doing all sorts of intense music things, and, and one of the first projects that came my way is they said, well, we're working on this thing, um, and we want to do something with barnyard animals and music. Oh, okay. And they're like, can you do that? And I was like, sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I went home, and I, I got the, one of these sample CDs of, like, pigs and cows, chickens, of course. Of course, And, and edited them all. In, and, and then I wrote a bunch of music, and I put all these barnyard sounds, and there was for, for a streaming radio station. Oh, right? that's so, so used cool. To be streaming radio for the web. And uh, I put this together, and actually I remember my wife was in the other room, and she's like, what are you working on? And I'm like, I don't know, I'm creating this stuff. It's, it's, and she's like, it's really weird. And I was like, yeah, I know. And uh, so I went into the meeting the next day, which was with the heads of the company, and I just started working with these people. And I, they're like, so play us what you got. And I was like, okay, I think <laughs> I will. And I put it on, and I was just waiting, and they're listening, and there's moves. And I did this great piece where there were, all the barnyard animals were parts of a drum kit, uh -huh. you know? So, like, the chickens were the hi-hat. Oh, and like, that you know, sounds it was, anyway, lovely. It was great. It was really bizarre, and I expected you know, after the music stopped to hear all the criticism. And I stopped and they looked at me and they said, that's great, can you make more of that? <laughs> and I, I looked, I did a double take like I was on TV. I'm like, I thought there was a camera. <laughs> like a prank or something. Were, yeah, I'm like, what is happening here? So everything at Nickelodeon has been like that. It's, 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 it's been great. It sounds amazing and so much fun. Yeah. I know you work with um, Super Size Me as well. Yeah. How was that like? Working on Super Size Me was also crazy and weird, too. So we'll keep with the weird theme here. I feel like Jeff Goldblum somehow. <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, so I actually met Morgan because he was a friend of my cousin. Okay. And uh, when I met him, he had a script in his back pocket for a show called uh, I Bet You Will, which ran on MTV. Well, first it started on the web and then spun over to, uh, to MTV. It was one of the first shows to go actually from the Internet onto... Oh, okay. uh, onto broadcast television. Um, and then he got this idea for Super Size Me, and I'm like, he asked me if I wanted to work on it. I'm like, yeah, that sounds great. And then we, long story short, did the production and uh, went out to Sundance with it. And okay. Wow. Boom. Awesome. Who and you would have known? I don't know, but now you're doing <laughs> something completely different. You're now in San Francisco State. True. What's I went it to high like? school in the Bay Area. I went okay. to Berkeley High School. Oh, did you really? Yeah. That is so cool. Yeah. And now you're here in San Francisco State? Yes. Is there I, anything weird about teaching here? or? Well, the students, you know. Really? You, yeah, you know. I, I don't doubt that. You know, a lot I'm of weird things. I'm looking at some of them right now. But, <laughs> you know, no, I mean, yeah. San Francisco State is a great, great place. Great place. I actually was out here as a student myself. Oh, cool. Yeah. When was that? Uh, <laughs> now you're allowed to answer that. No, no, I can't. Uh, that, was, that was 1990, 91. Okay. Yeah. And now you're teaching here. I teach Tell here us in about music that. Development. I teach music for games and I teach uh, music for film. So we're putting together a, a program in all kinds of music for different types of visual media, including VR and AR and different types of immersive cool. media. Um, and I'm also teaching composition lessons and yeah, working with a bunch of really great people right, over in the music department. Like all right, um, and anything else you want to tell our viewers, maybe um, all the San Francisco students out there about your classes or any advice for them at all? Absolutely. Stay in school, all right? Thank you so much, Steve, for your time, and now I had the privilege of going to Hardly Strictly Bluegrass Festival, so let's see how weird we get. Let's check it out.
Actually, I go with a lot of events. Um, this one lasted three days. It was actually a large, one of the largest crowds I've ever been. Oh, really? Um, I've never seen so many stages like this here in San Francisco, but uh, so far it's been really good. I'll never forget the day our landlord called and said, read your lease. No pets allowed. My owner tells him my dog ate the lease, but that didn't work. And now I'm stuck in a shelter, but this pit bull is ready for a new crib. I'm loving, loyal, and play well with others. So don't be intimidated by all my muscles, because the biggest one I have is my heart. <laughs> That's right, I said it. Hi, I'm Nick, and I'm pissed. Let's talk about Kanye West, or Yee, as he likes to be called. On SNL last weekend, what was that about? Kanye went on a rant that was eventually cut from live broadcast, expressing his views in support of President Xi, I mean Trump. Just saying that out loud makes it feel like we're living in a dystopia. If you wanted to wear a red hat so badly, Kanye, you could get one with something embroidered that didn't offend more than half the country, or one with nothing on it at all. Yeet! Enough of that. Let's talk music festivals. They can either be the best experience of your life or the worst. To help you out, I'm going to give you the pros and cons of festivals. Pro, you get to listen to your favorite artist. Con, you're surrounded by drunks that don't know your favorite artist, like this guy. Pro, you meet new and new people with amazing outfits. Con, those new people make the wait line just to pee an hour long. Pro, you get to spend the whole day surrounded by music. Con, you, the day starts off with you sweating your balls off and ends with it freezing them off. All right, since they're cutting me short this week, that's all I have for you guys. I'm Nick, and I'm still pissed. Thank you, Nick, for the weekly update. Right now, we have another interview with an SF State alumni who has gone on to put on killer music events across the city. Let's bring out P. Kitty. Hello, thank you for Hello. being here today. Thanks for having me. <laughs> So, P. Kitty, um, tell me what you got on here. Like, tell me about this outfit and all these bracelets and necklaces. Yeah, absolutely. I'd love to. Very small community within uh, the EDM world. Lots of different kinds of EDM, and candy kids enjoy happy hardcore. So you're just a raver kid, and this is just rave attire? Raver kid. You know, there's a lot of different kinds of ravers. This is some of the things ravers wear. Uh, you know, we believe in peace, love, unity, respect, and that's uh, what we're all about. That's why it's so colorful. You want to be peaceful, love, happy. Uh, we're happy EDM people. So plur, plurring, that's a, is that a community vibe or is that? Yeah, so plur is basically uh, a framework which we can all relate to each other, uh, communicate with each other and, and be together. So it stands for a peace, love, unity and respect, uh, which basically just, you know, you know, act kind to each other, take care of each other. You know, we're all out to have a good time, but uh, be good to one another while you're doing it. Okay. How did you get into the rave scene? Like, what was your first rave like? Well, my first rave was a long time ago. It was uh, in the Cow Palace in 2010, the last rave they had there. Huge rave, lots of people, lots of fun. Went on to uh, go to SF State, where I found out about Marty's a little more. Actually, during my first week, there was a rave on campus, which I thought was permitted by the school. 
but it was actually just a bunch of renegade kids with a sound system. It was so much fun. I went out there, uh, you know, I had a great time. And then a friend invited me to uh, another event, and that's where I started promoting. It was a great time. That's how I got involved. And since then, it's taken me across the world, uh, basically uh, Croatia. It's taken me to Spain. It's taken me to Israel. Uh, basically, all over the world, just uh, being in touch with these small communities of different kinds of people who like different kinds of EDM. Uh, and the happy hardcore is definitely prevalent in Spain and in the UK, so it's definitely a good time. So can you tell me, like, what is so weird about raving? Oh, raving's just about being yourself. So is it weird to be yourself? I think it could be, or it is. Um, but, you know, I found out, I never would have expected myself to dress like this, be like this a long time ago, but then as I found out and discovered more about myself, I found out I was actually uh, quite a weird person. I mean, check it, it's pretty, it's pretty strange stuff. So where, where, what are these balls for? Well, and these the are the bracelets. What are the bracelets and balls for? Tell me about them. So the bracelets, uh, these are it's basically a candy. We make little beads in our free time. We give them to each other as gifts, as trades. Just be like, hey, you know, great seeing you. Here's a piece of candy. You know, to make the little trade. Uh, this particular set of candy was given to me by a an older raver. So this has been going on for a very long time, since the early '90s, and. I think this, this was promote, passed down from promoter to promoter for many, many years. Um, and some guy, uh, one of my close friends from Central California, who recently uh, had a child and a family, you know, he's kind of on his way to just kind of doing his own thing, not being able to come out of some more. He passed these along to me um, as a great, fantastic gift, which I'm uh, so thankful for. I think it's amazing. So it's just a way to kind of savor the moment and, um, you know, and just remember uh, what you came to do. That's beautiful. Um, so before we go, can you tell me about the events coming up that you're promoting or having? Sure. So I'm doing a few events uh, over at the DNA Lounge, San Francisco. Uh, I've got this one. Uh, it's a bass event called Drop Colt. Boom, boom. Um, heavy bass, headbangers. And then we got a, uh, a plur rave coming up uh, on the 26th at DNA Lounge. Uh, drum and bass, a lot of happy hardcore music, plur vibes, great time. Perfect. Before we go, can can we do like a little trade? I don't have anything to give oh, you. Oh, of course. But yeah, let me give you, you one. Can you just show us? Here, try to figure it out. Okay, we do so the we do peace. And then we do love. Love. Lock hands, unity, respect. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. There we have it. P Kitty, everyone. Hey, guys. How are you today? Good. I'm here to talk about how with technology, you can make amazing worlds. Come with me. My team and I bring the Halo world to life. Is that you? That is me. I wasn't a math genius, and I knew nothing about coding. But you guys do. You guys have the power to change things. I want your job. I want you to have my job. Hey, guys, it's Nick. And I'm not as pissed anymore, because we have Bird Caravan in the studio. Take it away. <laughs>
Wow, how awesome was that math rock band? You know, I think I kind of like Nick's theremin playing them better, though, you know? Yeah, I mean, we all know who the real talent is, right? All right, well, that is our show for today. Make sure you come back next week for our spooky Halloween special. See you guys later. Bye! Bye.